Who's the worst morning person in your family? What's he act like in the morning? Leave me alone, I'll get up later. That's great. <laughs> Is your mom a good driver? Yes. Is your dad? <laughs> Sometimes it's a little bumpy on the road. <laughs> My mom will be like, seriously, you were about to hit that car. <laughs> and then my dad will be like, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> he doesn't watch where he's going. He doesn't watch, what, what's he doing then? Texting on his phone. Oh, you just I called out. What does your dad do at work? What's his job? Um, He's like an engineer. An oh, an engineer. What do engineers do? They drive trains. That's very true. <laughs> do, you, do you drive trains in your home office, Dad? I do not. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think your parents do when you guys aren't around? Party. What, <laughs> <laughs> what do you think they do, Connor? Um, just stare at their phones. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the best cook? Mom. Mom. What's your favorite Mom. dinner that she cooks? Salmon. Ooh. I love her so much. You do? Yes. And macaroni and cheese. And chicken. Chicken? You got quite a menu over and here. Fruits. Does your dad cook at all? Yeah, he makes bagels. So no, he doesn't. He makes like <laughs> do, you, do you have a bedtime? No. Nope. That's what I hear. 7, Seven o'clock. o'clock. We want to be 8 o'clock. What's 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock. And do you ever stay out past? No. No. You know better? Yes, what happens better. if you do? <laughs> Everything's cold. <cool. laughs> do you ever stay at past your bedtime? Yes. You do? <laughs> Who let you do it? Um, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs>
You have to create a rhythm in your family where those very things become a part of your everyday activity. Because Moses went on in his speech to the Israelites to say this, talk about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up, tie them as a system on your hands and bind them to your foreheads, write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. What he says here may seem so common sense at first glance that you wonder why he even said it, but it was actually remarkably futuristic. His statement transcends every generation and taps into the unique potential of a family. I mean, generally speaking, all people get up with the sun, they move around during the day, they share a meal, and they go to sleep at night. That's just the way things flow. Take a look at what Moses said again. Talk about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. This rhythm cooperates with the way life naturally happens. So what if the best way for you to parent your kids in the phase that they're in is to simply leverage the everyday moments you already have together? In this way, you don't need to add an extra special family meeting to your week. You don't need to wake your kids up an extra hour early so you can have more quality time. You simply need to begin to notice the time that you already have together and then be a little more intentional. Just like everything else, the natural rhythm of your home will change at every phase. In the phase guides, we identified four key times for every phase of life. I mean, most likely, you'll never have more of a schedule than you do in the first years of life. Think about it. With a new baby, your rhythm might look like this. Morning time, feeding time, cuddle time, bath time. With a preschooler, you might spend just a little bit less time feeding them the same way you did when they were a baby, but your time in the car may become a little more interactive. I mean, maybe you begin to talk to your preschooler or play special music as you go. In the elementary years, things begin to look a lot like Moses was talking about in Deuteronomy. As you wake your kids up for school in the morning, you have a unique opportunity to instill purpose in them by starting the day with encouraging words. As you go along the road, driving them to school or activities, you can use that time to interpret life and have informal conversations. When you eat a meal together, it doesn't have to be around a formal dining room table or an especially fancy home-cooked meal, but you can take some time to have intentional conversations that establish values. And then as they go to bed at night, never miss an opportunity to tuck them in. Give them your attention at the end of the day to build a unique level of intimacy with them. In the middle school years, the kind of time you have with your preteen may change. I mean, you may have to loosen up your expectations for what you think is gonna happen in the everyday moments, but some of the wisest middle school parents I know have keyed in on the value of one of those times in particular. They say drive time is premium. I mean, think about it this way. If you have middle schoolers, you are probably doing a lot of driving. But what if, instead of dreading the hours on the road, as you wait for the day when your kid can drive herself to the movies, you just decided to see travel time as a window of opportunity. Because in a few short years, you won't have the same kind of time together. In high school, it may seem like there are very few times left when you and your teenager are in the same place. You might have to wake up a little early or try to rearrange your work schedule just so you can catch them on the way out the door in the morning. You may have to offer to pay to take them to a favorite restaurant just so you can share a meal together on occasion. You might just decide to fold some of their laundry so you can have a reason to be in their room at bedtime, just in case they wanna talk or say goodnight. But one time every high school parent has is something we like to call their time. It's that moment when your high schooler calls you Maybe they forgot something they need. Maybe they're in a situation when they need you to bail them out. Maybe they just suddenly decided they wanted to talk. Whenever that happens in these short years, when you only have a few marbles remaining in your jar, stop what you're doing. Their time is actually part of your everyday rhythm in the high school years. Maybe these times resonate with you, or maybe you have others that seem more prominent for your family. The main thing to think about right now is simply this. What is the rhythm in your home? You'll never be able to add hours to your day or days to your week, not any more than you can add marbles back to your jar after the weeks have passed. All you can do is to begin to view the everyday moments you have together in a little more intentional way. Remember what we already said, what happens in a moment will never have the same kind of impact as what happens over time. That's why there's collective momentum with what you do every week. With each phase, 
You redefine the routine times. With each phase, you learn how to adjust the way that you interact. With each phase, you fight for your relationship in a new way. I mean, remember, your time is limited. You have 936 weeks from the time your baby is born until they graduate and move to what's next. And in the beginning, those weeks pass pretty slowly. It may seem like an eternity before your baby will ever sleep through the night or maybe sleep for a few consecutive hours between feedings. The weeks feel like they're going slow as you count out your marbles one by one. But eventually, your toddler learns how to stand. And then, before you know it, they begin walking. And as soon as they start walking, those weeks move a little bit quicker as they begin to get into new things around your house and time speeds up just a little more. Before you know it, they're going to preschool. And now there are hours that maybe they're outside of your sight for the first time. And then they get into elementary school. The time begins to move much more quickly as they get new friends and new teachers. You feel like all you're doing is maybe driving them to activities, keeping up with what they're doing and what they have on the schedule this week. Maybe you're a parent of middle schooler. Once they hit middle school, they're going everywhere. Your life speeds up. It may feel like it's more intense than it's ever been before. There are hours of time when they disappear to their room. You don't know where those weeks are going. And then your kid enters high school. You realize you have a limited number of weeks left and those last four years will go quicker than ever before. And before you know it, you've literally lost your marbles. And it happens fast and you can't put them back in the jar because that's the nature of time. That's why what happens in the routine times of your life are not really all that routine. That's why cooperating with the rhythm of your day and your week and your year is more important than it feels like it is. So just remember, you don't really need more time to build influence with your kids. You just need to leverage the time you already have if you want to leave a legacy of faith and character in the lives of your kids. Do it when you sit down, when you get up, when you settle in for the night, when you ride along the way. Remember, it's what you do in the ordinary rhythms of life that will make a lasting impression on your kid's heart.